Hello again Struck Club, today I'm bringing you my uh, What the Struck is King's Bounty 2 video which uh, could be considered my first impressions uh, slash review of the game after it launched on Steam and as well as maybe to some of you it might serve as a beginner's guide, more of a general guide about the game. So what is King's Bounty, what the struck is King's Bounty 2. It's the sequel to a legendary turn-based strategy with RPG elements. This time the developers are making the RPG elements a bigger and more immersive part of the game. So the Heroes of Might and Magic style camera and map exploration that we know from King's Bounty 1 has been replaced with a third person exploration similar to those of games like Baldur's Gate 3, The Witcher series, Kingdoms of Amalur, just to name a few um, third person uh, action RPGs or RPG games. Um, to give you an example. However, the turn-based tactical combat in the style of Heroes of Might and Magic, Age of Wonders and King's Bounty 1 is still there. Uh, so if you if you felt like playing such a game that is still there and so is the legend and the, the leadership point system from king's bounty one so if you like that leadership point system that decides uh, the unit size the army size for each um, for each uh, single army pack let's let's say stack stack of units uh, this is still there a very nice system i'm very happy that they kept this system and yeah this results in a very nice fusion of game genres so i will go through all different parts of the game feel free to use the chapters uh, and skip through the video if you don't uh, need all the information and just want to know about certain parts of the game and hopefully you enjoy the ride and the pros and cons will be at the end. The first thing I'd like to talk about is the story, the game's story. It starts with us in a prison. We're imprisoned uh, for apparently poisoning the king, which we didn't, but um, we have been blamed for it. Um, the king is still not dead, but um, in a critical condition or whatever. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much, but that's kind of it. And they free us from the prison so we can help with a certain quest. I don't want to say what quest. I don't want to say who uh, issued the orders and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, we have to do a bunch of quests. We have to go through a prologue zone. More about that um, in the chapter about the maps where I'm going to show you the prologue zone and the next zone um, that we move on to after that. So yeah, this is an interesting story and I've, uh, I've actually enjoyed it. It's not your amazing uh, story that would make you wow. That's, that's, I've never seen that thing. It's not that type of a story, but it has its nice moments. Maybe many of you will get impressed by the story in this game. Uh, for me, it's okay. It's not something to wow me, but it's not something um, where I would want to skip through every dialogue. In fact, the dialogue is very nice, uh, nice and well written. There are some witty lines, especially of the main character. Uh, I selected one of three main characters at the beginning. I selected Catherine. Uh, I'm not sure if the dialogue is exactly the same if you play with the other two, but I've definitely enjoyed uh, her witty dialogue, her witty lines. Now let's talk about the combat. So as you're exploring, once you get near a fight, you would see this yellow glowing circle. You would see some of the units um, that are in there to give you an idea what you need to expect. But you can always just approach it, go into the circle and um, have a closer look, inspect every single unit of the enemy's army. See what skills they have, what their HP and other stats are and decide if you're strong enough for the fight and if you have the right units and if you don't like your army um, then you can just escape and change your army go to the army screen pick something from the reserve or go buy different units and you can always come back and do the fight you're not walked into it you can always retreat and and do it later so um, don't rush certain fights if you're not ready do, do some quests um, get more leadership um, level up um, get uh, more uh, units and um, then come back for the fight and once you start the fight um, there it is heroes of might and magic style obviously you have um, you can move the camera here it's not 2d it's 3d and uh, there's the, f the deployment phase where you basically decide where to place the units i'm not gonna finish this battle for you so we can keep it short 
but I'm just gonna show you um, an example of just some deployment there we go I'm let's say I want to keep those units this way and now the enemies will have more initiative um, the initiative decides uh, which unit goes first you can see this one just killed nine of my ten healers because well um, it's the type of unit that does more damage for each uh, hex tile that they pass and then you can use spells one spell per turn even if you have more mana you cannot use more than one spell per turn you can use things like meteor boom on some ranged enemies aoe like for example this um, and uh, some units have skills as i mentioned so this one has a ranged skill that they can use um, if they can reach the target um, some units can wait and attack later if you want so it can wait and attack at the end of the turn and a unit can also defend and when they're done with the turn they always defend but um, but while you're moving, while you're attacking, you're obviously not defending, so you take hold on the food and you don't have extra armor. And as you uh, saw, this one had a skill. And I'm gonna show you how some other units have skills. So this one is a ranged unit. And unfortunately, it cannot attack um, range because there is a melee enemy close to it, but it can move. This is a great way to show, to show you what... Um, what um, control zones are see there's a control zone if i move i will get attacked uh, also if i attack i will get counter attacked but the next person who attacks that same target that same target cannot counter attack more than once per turn unless you have a perk that um that lets you so weirdly enough di this one didn't counter attack not sure why I didn't um, use the control zone, probably because it's a bird or maybe because this stone elemental has some protection. Um, in any case, I can move it now and now I can use ranged attacks. I'm gonna try and show you control zone when I control this unit, the spearman. So this one has a spell, I wanna show you what the spell does. Um, it can either do this spell or you can use this uh, ray of light. So yeah, boom, you can just um, cast it here on that enemy or that enemy, it doesn't matter which one. And now let's show you the control zone. I'm gonna move and get attacked. Because uh, the control zone. And if I move this one, it doesn't get attacked because this one already used its control zone um, movement. So that pretty much uh, should sum it up. Units have skills, some of the skills you can use X, X amounts of times per battle, others are on a cooldown and you can use them uh, as much as you want uh, as long as um, it's in cooldown and you can use one spell per turn. So yeah, you would have to adapt, you would have to be strategic about some fights, you would have to make sure you minimize the damage you take um, and choose your targets wisely. Uh, tactical combat in RPGs is not for everyone, but those who love it will enjoy this game in my opinion. Now let's quickly tell you about the map and the world of the game. So as you, as you start the game you will be um, leaving a prison and there will be this little area, the Albion Highlands, where you have to do a few quests. Um, I don't want to spoil the quests, but yeah, and there's those uh, things, um, those stations here, which are fast travel stations, but you have to be at one of those to, to move to another one. So if I'm here, I can move there, 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 or even on the other area to ones that you have uncovered, but you have to find them. You have to find them to unlock them. And sometimes you would have to fight some enemies before unlocking one of those. And just like in, in traditional Heroes of Might and Magic style, there might be a fight on a certain bridge and you won't be able to pass to the areas um, across the bridge until you finish that fight. Um, it's just the, the, and the camera angle is different, but the, the, the way it handles things uh, in most cases will be the same. So after you finish the first pro walk, the first chapter of the quests, um, then you would move to the capital and um, the story, the saga continues. And this is a much bigger zone. Uh, and after this, I'm not sure if there will be another one, 
But even if there isn't, uh, maybe with DLCs they can add more zones and keep us playing. Um, in general, it's just um, just a single player game, so um, they can keep adding, expanding, and even if the, if there aren't any scenarios, random scenarios like in Heroes, how we could randomize maps in Age of Wonders and player-made content, even if such things don't exist. Um, the story zones so far have been plentiful um, and um, there's a lot of wood, there's a lot of exploration to be done. Now let's talk itemization. What do items do in this game? First of all, keep in mind your main hero you do not fight with. Your main hero is there to cast spells and to lead the army. Your main hero has uh, three main attributes, arcane knowledge, which uh, basically is used to upgrade uh, and research spells. So the higher the, um, the higher the amount of arcane knowledge, the, um, the more spells you can um, get and the more things you can learn. Certain things would require a certain amount of arcane knowledge, like 90, 150, 50, etc. to learn those spells, to upgrade those spells. And it also increases the amount of mana available in combat during a fight. So during a fight you have a limited amount of mana at your disposal. Uh, even if you have more, you won't be able to use all of that. So you have to increase their arcane knowledge. So if you want a caster build, that's one of the stats you want. Then there's magic power. Magic power basically increases the damage dealt by spells and the duration of damage over time spells by one round for every 75 points. So the 75 points only affects the duration, but each point of magic power would give you a certain percentage, uh, 0 0.x uh, percent um, of damage to your spells. And then there's warfare. If you want to focus on a build where your army is the main source of damage rather than spellcasting, then you want as much warfare as possible and as much other stats to your units, which we'll talk in a moment about. Um, and that increases the allied unit damage. You can see 20 warfare is 13.8. And that's what you get from uh, items, th those types of stats. There's other things that are called army influence and there's for example health percent, health FWAT, resistance um, which is pretty much, uh, it's FWAT but it's percent, uh, critical, uh, each, each FWAT point of critical hit is 1% of critical hit, most of those things, the FWAT ones, give you a percentage. Then there's a morale. Morale system basically uh, more about that in the army segment. I don't want to uh, make this segment too long but there's morale and there's uh, different things that give you damage to different types of enemies or morale to different uh, to different types of uh, units I mean. So if you have Nostrian army units this one would give you damage to those units and so on. So basically that's what the items give you. You have uh, common items, you have uncommon which are green and there's legendary. I don't don't know if there's something between legendary and uncommon but it would make sense if there's magic or epic because if it's white green and uh, legendary that that's kind of it seems weird but uh, there are set items as well so there are legendary sets and there are green sets and uh, some sets uh, you get from quests like um, those maximilian items like um, uh, where is it? This one, for example, Maximilian Sabatons, and these are from the same set. Then this is another Maximilian um, set from the Duke's Charms. So this is another one from Maximilian's Weapons. So some items would give you, some items would give you um, bonuses, but give you decreases. Those sets, while others would just give you bonuses. So you have to pay attention to to this thing. And yeah, there are other items which are the regular ones. There's scrolls which you can use as one time, or you can learn them more about that in the in the spell segment. But in general, you have um, weapon swats which are uh, main hand, off hand, or you can uh, use a two-handed weapon if you like. And then you have uh, a helmet and uh, a chest and gloves and boots. Then you have a belt, amulet, two rings, and something that's like a charm, like a trinket. And then there's probably going to be something that you equip on the horse. I'm not sure what that is. I've never found it. And yeah, as you see, those are the types of stats you can expect. Uh, I, I tried to show you some, some examples uh, of things you can get. You can get leadership as well, by the way, as you saw. And yes, those stats are for your 
army mostly. Even if it boosts the character, this results in boosting the army or the character spell casting or, or spell damage. And there's a bunch of items you can find either as quest rewards or by just simply wooting something like, for example, this thing. I can go and wood this and that would give me items and then I can sell them. I can sell those items. There's a lot of junk items. There's a quick sell junk, all junk, junk items option. And more about uh, wooting and um, stuff like that later. Now let's talk about army and units. This is something uh, that probably didn't change that much compared to the old game. So you have five army swats. You cannot carry more than five units in your army. You have a reserve and you can move around units from the reserve um, back to your army. Um, and just uh, depending on what you're fighting, you might want to switch up. Uh, and there's four types of units. Order, which is green. Finesse, which is blue. Red, which is power and the yellow which is uh, anarchy and those are ideals and those are ideals we will talk about in a in a different segment you you can skip to to the the part where we talk about um, ideals and talent points um in a, and 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 to learn more about those uh, what what they are but basically if you have units from different types the morale goes down so you would need certain things to increase the morale. If you have only units from the same type, that would um, give the whole army increased morale. Um, so it's probably best, um, unless you have a lot of items boosting the morale, it's probably best to stick to one or two, um, no more than two um, different types of units. And there's all sorts of units. There's beasts, there's undead, there's elementals, there's golems like magical creatures, there's humans. Um, there's dwarves, uh, I've heard something about elves, I haven't seen them, but I've heard people mentioning them. There's bandits like raiders, deserters, etc. And, and each unit has certain uh, key um, things to, men to, notion, to notice. First of all, the army size is 5 units, but, uh, but each unit stack can go up to 10. And over here you're seeing this unit costs 130 leadership. And the limit is 10, so I need 1300 leadership to have 10 of those. Now this unit now is 460. So if I want 10 of those, I would need 4600. And you can see I have 2360, which is enough um, for only 5, which is 2300. So the more leadership, the bigger the unit stack, but it ends at 10. And over here, this is the tier of the unit. So that's tier one, this is tier two, uh, and this is tier four. You can see the, the leadership required for certain units is different. And as you've probably noticed, each unit ha has passive skills and active skills, and each unit has um, their own damage, their own resistance and armor. This is magical resistance and elemental damage, this is armor, um, it has critical hit chance, uh, it has HP, then there's initiative and then there is speed. So that's the thing to continue. And there's ranks. Each unit starts as rank 1 and as it levels up it gets to rank 2 and eventually rank 3 which is the maximum. And you've probably noticed there's a bunch of different uh, passive skills like uh, vulnerable to one type of damage, immune to one type of elemental stuff, being ranged, being melee, casting skills. This is a skill that you can only cast three times in battle. It's a skill you can cast as many times as you want, but there's a cooldown on it. A and uh, there are just so many, so many things to consider. Talents and ideals. As I mentioned, there's four ideals. Order, power anarchy, finesse, and order and anarchy are opposite, power and finesse are opposite, and there will be quests where you would have to make a choice between order or anarchy, or power and finesse, you have to either help an NPC or another NPC, um, um, side with one person or another person, and that would result in getting um, something equivalent to, to what that action represents, and that would give you another point of this. And in the end, um, this will change the ending. Um, from what we've heard, there's different endings. There's probably four, 
we, I'm not sure how many, but there's probably going to be four one, uh, one for for each type that you've maxed out, or maybe whichever is your main one, maybe whichever is the first one you maxed out. I haven't finished the game yet. But again, certain quests, certain side missions will reward you certain points. And it might be picking between order and anarchy, or picking between order and power, or picking between order and finesse. It doesn't have to be the two op opposing sides of the same coin um, that you pick between. Uh, but there will be choices that you need to make, and it will give you points. And getting certain points um, are required to level up certain skills. See, those ones, um, you can start leveling from zero points. Those ones here, the second grade, those require you to have at least eight points invested in the corresponding ideal. Um, and then after that, um, you, it would require 16 points as well as certain levels of certain um, previous things. So this one requires wife steal three and hurry up two. So those two, this one requires uh, an antiquarian and hurry up. This three, this two. So you would see it requires stuff and eventually the final ones require a level two on those. So you would need to invest into those, you would need to invest into those to get um, the final one. And the same goes for each of them. So as you see, order um, is more about um, about uh, morale, increasing the morale of certain units in the army. It also gives you things like hero experience, it gives you things like leadership, like increased healing, um, like uh, uh, random uh, buffs to your units and increase the duration of buffs generated by allied unit skills and things like that, like the Phantasmal Guardian, whereas um, Finesse is more about uh, leveling up your spells and, um, and spell schools. There's four types of spell schools, Magic of Death and Darkness, uh, uh, Magic of Air and Fire, more about um, those in the, in the spells. Uh, chapter and there's things that increase their cane knowledge, um, the, the, the less mana when upgrading, uh, increase damage from heroes, uh, damage over time spells, and stuff like that. In general, this is the spellcaster thing. Power, on the other hand, is when, when you want to focus on dealing damage through your units. This increases the experience of winning battles uh, with the units, not your uh, main character, but the, the army, the unit experience. This uh, gives the units, all units um, that are allied to you, uh, resistance, this gives them armor, this uh, gives you warfare, which in turn results in unit damage. And there's all sorts of different things uh, leading to Generalissimo, which increases the warfare stat influence on units by 20%. Um, whereas, as you see, this one, in our white units reflect 35 damage back um, at the enemy of the unit. And Anarchy is all about doing damage and healing with that damage, big hits to heal you more, um, reflecting damage and... Um, and uh, double striking, like look at Rampage. Allied units can counterattack two times per round, which is pretty nice. Um, and this one, allied units gain one speed for one turn. There's uh, all sorts of good, uh, good things to consider. So again, you have to you have to stick to one or two. I've decided to go order and finesse, but maybe eventually when I feel like returning for a second playthrough, I can try power and anarchy as a combo, which will be pretty fun, um, unit based instead of a spellcaster based. But that pretty much uh, should sum up um, the talent system. The first respec is for free, and the next respec costs 10,000 uh, gold coins which uh, at the beginning might seem like a lot. I wish it was like two or 1,000 or three <laughs> forever, but uh, that's just me. I mentioned the spell book and that there's four different spell uh, categories. Earth and Ice, the School of Life and Light, the School of Air and Fire, and the School of Death and Darkness. As, as you can see, it's written here. Death and Darkness is spells that reduce the enemy's stats, like um, this poisons the enemy. And this damage over time. This, uh, for example, fears the enemy, so they cannot attack or counter attack. Curse deals damage um, and also reduces the morale of a unit. Um, this reduces the initiative. This um, um, is weakened, so the unit's attacks deal the minimum amount of damage 
uh, also reduces uh, removes power saturation if it's on it this um, reduces the the damage by 50 percent and this reduces the armor and there's all sorts of spells you you have to find and if you find the spell uh, as a scroll and you have enough um, you have enough uh, mana, I can demonstrate now, you can learn that spell. You see, I have 108 mana required to learn it and I have thousands, so I can just click here and boom, we know the spell now. Um, and certain spells you can level up, like this one, I can level up this one and it will let it uh, affect up to two targets and it would let me pick which two targets. But right now I don't need it because um, I'm, I'm not using it, but let's level it up. Um, it's, it's gonna cost more. If, if you only have one range unit, you might wanna keep Dead Eye 1. If you have multiple range units, then you might wanna go Dead Eye 2 or 3. And since I've leveled up my school fair and far to level 2, now this allows me to upgrade the spell to level 2. My other schools are not leveled up to level 2, so my spells cannot go past level 1, even if I had the mana to level them and there's all sorts of spells so fire and air is spells that deal direct damage power up allied units and summon creatures so you have things like meteor inner flame um, actually each each uh, school seems to have something that gives you uh, like burning touch additional fire damage like uh, celestial fire additional uh, magical damage like um, frost blade additional ice damage and so on so each school seems to have one of those each, each school, school seems to have something like a ray that does damage and damage over time but um, meteor is something amazing like heavy hitting aoe that also costs a lot of mana and also has cooldown uh, not cooldown but uh, ha has has burning and there's chain lightning and there's good stuff here whereas life and light as you might have guessed that's healing and um, buffing and uh, earth and ice crowd control and summoning also there's th things like buffing like uh, um, stone skin i would strongly suggest to newbies uh, sometimes swallowing enemies and kiting them around while dealing with another enemy is very useful it has helped me a lot um, in certain fights, but you have things like silence here as well. So it does have some debuffs as you can see that are pretty nice It has freezing and yeah in general there's a lot of stuff, but now here is the good thing Wayfaring magic this magic applies outside of combat or after combat uh, So there's things like this the hero gains 15 warfare active for two battles so it doesn't expire until two battles have finished. Or this, uh, increase the morale of all allied units by one, active for one battle. And you can see those over here at the bottom of the screen. See, this is um, warfare, uh, prowess that gives me warfare. This channel gives me 10 magic power. And you can see the, the dots at the bottom are how many battles this would last for. Um, there's man over four. So in general, there are a lot of good things uh, to consider and um, you can find those scrolls. They are one-time use scrolls and you have to buy, buy them from NPCs. I don't think you can learn those. Um, it's, it's just not how it works. Now let's talk about the open world and exploration and looting. As I've shown you earlier, um, in the open world, I showed you the maps of the zones and yeah in the open world you are in a third person camera and you can just find something and loot it and boom now you have some some stuff you can sell stuff you can trade you can buy stuff and there's all sorts of things and you can find certain things like shrines shrines that will give you certain per permanent buffs one time usage for example this one would give me mana which is kind of like a resource we use to cast spells and to upgrade spells and stuff like that. And there's other ones uh, that you might find spread around the map which don't show up on the, on the big map but you will see them when you pass them. And those can give you things like um, experience, like arcane, um, arcane knowledge, magic power, warfare, etc. So be on the lookout for those, they're one time use but they're good to have. And then you have your horse. The horse really helps with exploring, but keep in mind in big cities like the capital city and the mage's tower, the horse um, the horse is moving uh, with walk. This slow. This is how slow it moves. 
So here it moves quick, but then it will move slow. So keep that in mind. And yeah, as, as I mentioned, um, you find those uh, waypoints and then you can use them to, to fast travel. And fast traveling, thankfully, is for free. Um, but again, you have to be at a, way, at, a, at a port fair, at a fast travel station to, to travel to another fast travel station. And um, as you traverse through the map, you would see certain fights. Uh, and you can exit a fight at any time. Uh, as I mentioned in the combat section, um, you can engage in a fight, you can disengage it and do it later, but some fights you would have to do, otherwise you can't progress. So you can come back later when you're strong enough, when your units are strong enough, uh, and just do the fight when you're ready. Uh, or you can do it uh, right away. But in general, that's pretty much it about open water exploration. I love the world, it's beautiful, um, there's this little part I always say I like, if you see at the, at the background, there's something that looks like a volcano. Um, the world is good. I think it's an Unreal Engine 4, I don't think it's Unreal Engine 5. But um, they're, they're using good textures, good shading, um, the performance is stable, at least for me with the 1066 GB. So I hope you enjoy the, the open world exploration. There's a lot of wood to find, a lot of zones, and I prefer this type of exploration compared to Heroes of Might and Magic type of exploration, where I would just be controlling the, the horse, the hero, and I would tell it to click on this chest and boom, I get wood. Here I have to actually go and find where that wood is hidden. I've encountered a new tower, a new, a new ruins, and I need to look around the ruins and the tower or the cemetery to find where the wood is hidden. So it's not all automated and it's more immersive um, that way. Now the last thing I want to speak about is the pros and cons of the game. So I would say one of the biggest pros for me is the beautiful world and uh, as well as the amazingly nice gear design and, and weapon design of some of the things, armors, weapons, etc. Um, then for some people it's a pro um, that it's medieval meets fantasy, that type of um, art style, that type of setting. There's a deep turn-based combat system, for some this is a pro, others don't like turn-based games, but they should probably stay away from that game if they don't like turn-based combat. Um, there's some amazing uh, visual and sound effects, um, impactful ones, I like them. Um, there's some interesting build diversity when you consider your ideals and when you consider items and spells that you use and the units that you use uh, and which type those units belong to. So there's definitely some diversity there. There's decent itemization system. I like that there's um, legendary items, that there's common and common items, that there's sets um, and you have to decide which ones you want to um, pick for which build. Um, plenty of quests and side quests that will keep you busy and playing um, and um, it, will, it will be probably a long playthrough if you want to go 100% on everything, loot all the things, get all the quests done. A lot of wood to pick up around the map, so that's probably also um, um, a pro in its own way. Uh, then the third person versus top-down isometric exploration, for some it's, it's a pro that they decided to, um, to make it a third person um, and scrap down the top down slash isometric exploration for others it's a con for me personally it's a pro and the choices matter and multiple endings i think are also pros for the game now in terms of cons the first thing you would notice is there is no sprinting of your hero um, there is walking and there is jogging and the jogging is uh, yeah Apparently that's what the, the game devs think um, of realistic running uh, un unlimited without a stamina bar or anything. But I think the game could use uh, sprinting, even if it means adding a stamina bar and mechanic. Um, it would be nice to be able to hold a button and, and run for real, not just a little jog in the woods. Now, the game could use more quality of life, such as, for example, two tips when you hover over uh, certain stats. Some do have those two tips, but others don't. Um, some things are not explained well enough, and a new player might not know them. Even though there's some tutorials at the beginning of the game, I think some things could be explained better. For example, the leadership system. 
I think this is one of the things that uh, could be explained a little better. So an in-game uh, encyclopedia, an in-game wiki would be nice. Sure, there's people who make wikis, but not everyone wants to out and tap and visit um, something um, in their browser to read about things in the game. So there's um, no custom map scenarios or skirmishes, whatever you want to call it, um, or an editor to make those. Um, and in, in games like Heroes, uh, Age of Founders, etc., uh, user-made content um, was something that um, adds a lot of replayability to games. I know that the engine and the... Not the engine, I know that the, the, the third-person exploration they decided to go for makes it a little bit harder to, to think of how to implement uh, such custom maps and skirmishes, such custom scenarios. Um, and that also applies to no multiplayer, how this is exactly the same reason why there is no multiplayer, because it makes it harder to implement multiplayer to a game with uh, with such view compared to the other one. But um, it could be done. There is a way. If there's a view, there is a way to make it. It's just probably a lot of coding and it might take a lot of precious development. And they probably had a deadline and they wanted to release the game quickly. But it doesn't seem like a how fast rushed game. It's just a game that hasn't been developed with multiplayer in mind, which for some is a con. Um, I personally understand it and I don't consider it a con myself, but I still put it as a con because I know many people might feel like the need of a multiplayer for a game like this. There's probably a bunch of other pros and cons that I didn't uh, include, um, but um, if you have more that you want to add, just comment and and let me know and I might add them in the text version when I release it tomorrow. To get notified when I upload more content for this game or uh, other games like this one which would be Wooters of all varieties, isometric, uh, third person ARPGs, uh, Wooter shooters and all sorts of uh, Wooters like that, you could subscribe to my channel and hit that bell button to not miss out uh, on my content updates. And optionally, you can even join as a member of the Struck Club uh, on YouTube as a channel member to get access to exclusive perks such as uh, special emotes custom made by me, special badges custom made by me, that represents how many months you have been a member for, uh, as well as uh, opt-in uh, of editing tutorials that I can give for Photoshop, Adobe Premiere, as well as uh, shout outs and things like that. And I would like to use this uh, part of the video to thank all my um, YouTube members and uh, Twitch subscribers. Thank you for supporting the channel and keeping me going. Uh, thank you also for watching this video, everyone. Keep it cool, uh, Struck Club. Until next time, and goodbye.